So today, I want to talk to you about ChatGPT and how can you use ChatGPT to your advantage, especially for developers such as yourself and people who want to learn how to program. So ChatGPT is what's called the natural language processing tool. So essentially what it does is allows you to tap into the internet per se, and you can ask questions and you can interact with it. And it spits out information that you want to learn about. For instance, you can ask questions such as, you know, what are the most popular programming languages nowadays, right? Or what was the first programming language and all of those. And it's really awesome because it really opens up a lot of doors. Now, if you've never heard of ChatGPT, I urge you to go ahead. I have a link below or you can just follow this link here to go ahead and open a free account and go from there. It's really awesome. It's amazing. It has revolutionized the way we do things. Okay, so now there are different use cases uh, of people using ChatGPT. Most people are using it to do a lot of things. Some of them are using it to write resumes, to write children books, to write even novels, to write uh, cover letters, to write, you name it. Okay, so the beauty also is that people are using it to learn programming languages, to learn new skills, like to learn machine learning, to learn Python, to learn Java, to learn Swift. In my case, I use it as a tool to help me learn or to aid me in my learning endeavors because I like to learn stuff as you do. As I say, I like to use it to learn new things, but specifically in this channel here, talking about programming and so forth, I like to use it in that sense. Now, one thing that I have to let you know is that this is a tool, an AI tool, artificial intelligence tool that is still being developed. So it's not perfect by any means, but it's pretty close, I would say. In terms of information so use it as a guide as a helper not as a definite answer to whatever problem you're trying to solve that's that's another thing to keep in mind okay so here's what i will do so once you've logged in and you created an account this is what you see of course now because i'm a big fan of course i have chat gpt plus so they do have a subscription model you don't have to do that they have a free one so for instance, you can interact with it, okay? It has a nice interface that you can interact with it, ask questions and so forth. So I can say, what is Java? Hit enter. And you can see it's going to process this language that I have, this prompt that I added there. And it's going to say the answer. Java is a high level uh, programming language, general purpose programming language that was originated, originally developed by Sun Microsoft. So it gives you all the information you need to know about Java. So it aggregates all that information from the internet, right? From the models that are in the back end, and there's a lot of complexity that comes with this. So that's the beauty. It even gives all this information here um, that we can look at and learn, in this case, about Java, right? So it's really cool, very detailed. Now we can mo be more specific. What is Java <clears throat> for developing web apps? Something like this. Oops, I misspelled apps, but that's okay. It even knows exactly how to interpret this language and disregard errors in some cases. So it goes ahead and says a little bit more about Java as a popular language for developing web applications. And there we go. And it keeps going. Okay, so there we go. So there is our prompt. This is our prompt. And then ChatGPT goes ahead and aggregates all this information. So I'm talking to it. I am actually getting to interact with a bigger pool of information out there okay okay so i want to learn how to program in java i want to learn java how would that work like what kind of prompt questions i can put here to get what i need i could say for instance uh, give me the ultimate guide to roadmap for learning java programming like this and it's going to go ahead, hopefully, and give me exactly what I need. All right, so it says, here's an ultimate roadmap for learning Java programming. Let's go ahead and learn the basics of Java. Before diving into Java, it's essential to understand uh, best the basics of programming and tells us the concepts that we need to learn. And I know this because, you know, I teach this stuff. And it's true. These are the concepts that we need to learn. Let's wait until all of this is done so we can actually take a look and uh, let's see if the answers, how helpful this roadmap is. Okay, so there we go. Now it's done. And the first thing is learning the basics of Java. That's true. It includes the object-oriented programming concepts. It's very true. Okay, there we go. And then have a good understanding of object-oriented programming. That is the base of this programming language. 
and get familiar with Java syntax. That is true for any language. You have to get familiar with the syntax of that language. So that is indeed true. And practice coding exercises and give us even websites like HackerRank or WitGo for you to go and learn more and practice your coding skills. And of course, learn the Java APIs and frameworks. All right, so and it gives us different frameworks. It also gives us the Java Enterprise Edition, Java EE, Spring, and Hibernate. Okay, this is pretty good. And most importantly, you gotta build projects. I always tell my students, you gotta build projects to learn even better, even further, your uh, skills, your Java skills, programming skills in general. Okay, and contribute to open source projects. That's another way of learning, um, part of the roadmap to learning for learning Java. Okay, this is real good. And of course, the eighth one says here, keep learning. Okay, so keep going. So essentially, it is exactly, exactly true. This is a very good roadmap. Now, let's say I want to be more specific, but it's important to realize that this is an interface that allows you to interface with it, to talk to it, uh, to interact with it, to get questions answered per se, okay? But it's important to know how to ask those questions. So I could say, for instance, I want something more specific, okay? So I could say, um, I can copy, in fact, I can go back and copy the first prompt, and I'm going to say, give me the ultimate roadmap for learning Java programming in, let's say, three months, broken down into weeks, something like this. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. All right, so it's really going through the process and say, okay, first month, week one, this is what you do. And look at that, it's giving us the schedule, the schedule actually that we can use to put into practice and start learning this programming language. It's pretty awesome, actually, if you ask me. Okay, so after a few moments, you can see that we have a 12-week roadmap with a little bit more details in terms of what things that you need to learn. Oh, that's very cool. So look at this. So week one, we have month one. This is month one, by the way. So we have week one, introduction, stuff, setup setting up development environment, it's very important. And week two, introduction to Java, the actual Java programming language, syntax, and basic concepts. And even gives us uh, a beginner guide, so taking an online course. Wow, this is perfect, you can take my course, all right? And practice coding uh, ex exercises. And then on week three, you dive into object-oriented programming. So learning the principles of object-oriented programming, level OP encapsulation, inheritance, and so forth. And we have week four, Java collections. We'll talk about arrays, the maps, and so forth. And month two, which is going to be uh, week five, Java exceptions. And then six, week six, Java input output. Week seven, Java threads. And there you have it. Okay, so you can see it's very helpful, right? Um, you can take something like this and have some sort of, of an idea on how to tackle this this big endeavor, which is to learn, in this case, the Java programming. Now, I'm talking about Java, but that could be any language. It could be JavaScript, could be uh, Python, could be whatever it is that you're trying to learn. So it's very helpful. I love it. Let's say I want to learn something else. Let's say I want to learn Python. Okay, so I don't know Python that well. So let's see. Um, how do I learn Python? Very generic. Let's see what it says. Okay, so it's giving us the what we need to do, setting up the development environment, learn the basics. So start by learning the basic concept of Python. So essentially the same thing we saw earlier with Java. Okay, so there we go. And even goes to object-oriented programming concepts, practicing with code, coding exercises, libraries and frameworks. Very good. And build a big project. Again, the same concept, the same idea. Nothing really new there, but you can see that this is, this is, this is really good. So that's something you can follow and go there okay now i can also stop generating here and i can say okay how to write a simple python program or script that's fine let's see all right so it gives us here a first hello world that means if you have everything set up you can actually go ahead and write print hello like this and you should be able to see some results right look at this it says open a text editor you can open any text editor shown pad and so forth, type the program that is shown there, and save the file as hello.py, or py, I should say. And then, if you are using IDE, you can create a new Python file, blah, 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 all of that is great. So, 
So this is an idea. This is this is great because it gives you exactly the steps to write your first Python, simple Python program or script. Now, this is just to show you how powerful this is in terms of aiding you in your learning process, in your learning journey. So use these tools as a, a springboard, really, if you will, to get you to where you want to do or where you want to be. In this case, what do you want to learn if you have something you want to learn? So this allows you to learn things faster. Now, as I said, this, an a this is an AI, artificial intelligence, so it's still learning. There's a lot of things that are happening in the back end and it's still new. So be very careful of what, how you use it and what you do with it. Okay. So don't think that everything that this spits out, it's the truth. So be very careful. Do your due diligence so that you don't run into trouble. That's something that even tell you, they even tell you in their documentation, in their, um, agreements of usage and so forth. So just keep that in mind, but it's a wonderful tool that you can always use and rely on really to help you learn things faster. That's how I use it. I even use it to write articles so that I have some ideas or whatever I want to write. If I have a question about, okay, how do I structure certain, certain material that I want to teach or that I want to learn, I can ask it and it gives me some good ideas and I can verify that it's all good and I go from there. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you're new to this channel, my name is Paul Shone, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.